Happy 2016, y'all. I am doing a whole new show. As you can tell, I did another show upgrade you last week. This time, it is called Note to Self. I got the opportunity to go to Santa Fe with some of my girlfriends for the new year. And it was exactly what I needed to connect with kind of like-minded people that, I don't know, just inspire me. I got to see a new environment with snow. And trust me, when you are from Southern California, Snow is like the most amazing thing we've ever seen, ever. And when I was coming home on the plane, I thought to myself about sort of New Year's resolutions. And I usually always set like, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to go running, I'm going to eat super healthy, whatever I'm gonna do. And there's nothing wrong with that. I am not hating on that whatsoever. I think you need to ride whatever wave to self-improvement you can. So no hate from me on that. But personally, I felt a calling to step into myself more, to give myself permission in ways that maybe I hadn't, just to lead a happier life. So on the plane, I thought to myself, I wanna do a show called Note to Self. My goal in this channel, and maybe I'm just setting my own intention right here and right now, so I'm grateful for it for 2016, is to create a community here where we can support each other, we can love each other. My little slogan is feel good, look good, do good, and you can put that in whatever way you wanna do it, but I think it's really important to be holistic in your life. Who doesn't want to look good? And most importantly, who doesn't want to feel good? And I think when you feel good, you can give it back to people and that is doing good. So I want to share with you guys my seven resolutions for how I'm going to live a happier life in 2016. First up, explaining yourself is a waste of time. I don't know if Kate Moss said it. I don't know who said it, but it's never explain, never complain. Or maybe I got that backwards. But the point is, is that you don't know anyone in the explanation for anything. And a lot of times an explanation is a waste of time. So even if it's compl like apologizing for why you're late or explaining why something happened, just take a breath, move forward, move on with your life. Love me or leave me. That's where I'm at right now. And I think that there's an element of course of being conscious if that affects somebody else. Like it's not just like, well, I don't care. I think sometimes I over explain and feel a need to justify my decisions whatever they may be, whether it's moving, whether it's switching jobs, whatever it is, I feel a need to explain to certain people. And the truth is, I don't actually explain why I wanna do something to anyone. I am empowered, I am a woman, hear me roar, I'm gonna do it, watch it. Don't believe me, just watch. Second is being fearless in the pursuit of what makes you happy. I think a lot of times we all feel a need to please other people and it, sometimes it's at the sacrifice of ourself. Sometimes it's even at our job and staying there and being sensible or whatever. And I am just in this place where life is short. You have no idea what can happen at any time and you don't know what happens when you allow yourself to fully express what makes you happy. Because when you do that, when you fully get out there and you do what you feel, you don't know the opportunities that can come up. You don't know how your life can change. I mean, you look at these people like the eat, pray, love woman, right? Elizabeth Gilbert. She didn't know that was gonna be a huge national phenomenon of success. She took a huge risk, got a divorce, and that's why I think it resonates with so many people. Went across the world and did these things she wanted to do, and then in turn, she's on Super Soul Sunday and writing a slew of New York bestsellers. So I'm just saying that we all have our different version of what that is for us, but when we let go of what we think we need to do and we fearlessly pursue what we're passionate about, that's when the magic happens. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm trying to create some magic here in 2016. Three. Make what you want welcome. Mary Manna Morris might just be Mary Morrissey now. She says, make what you want welcome. And for some reason that just really resonated with me because we can put out what we want. We can say we want this, we can say we want that, we can visualize it, but if we're not showing up in our life in that way, it can't happen. So if you think of like our life being this like fertile kind of ground for where you wanna grow, like a seed, for example. If you were gonna grow like carrots, you might put down soil, you'd plant the seed, you'd water it, and you'd tend to it, and then you would get a carrot, right? You wouldn't just throw a seed out and never water it again and not think about it and be like, but I'm visualizing carrots. I'm visualizing carrots. No, so if you wanna be an artist, then you start painting, you start creating a body of work. You, you start meeting like-minded people and you just go with it. If you want to be an actor and you know your best thing is maybe to be in great shape, then you go to the gym every day. You don't think, you don't look at successful people out there and go, oh, I'll do that when I'm at their level. You start at whatever way you can, even in one small way, every single day, making a change, 
actively, physically making what you want welcome so that you get some carrots. Number four, trust the journey. I have many kind of gurus and people in my life that I glean whatever inspiration I can. I think I might have shared this before about Nancy Woods, my mentor that I talked about in my vision board video. Um, but she talks about trusting the part of you that started this journey. So if you chose to do something and it feels weird now, don't give up on yourself. Just keep going. Things don't always look how you think they're going to look, but if you open up and you allow kind of that silver lining to happen, it sort of just does and it shows up and it's kind of weird. And I think even with myself, it's like I look at things and it's like I have this ultimate intention of what I want in my life and I want my life to be. And then all of a sudden these weird things come up, but ultimately it's leading me to have this discussion with you right now. And for that I'm grateful and for that I know that I'm moving ahead in my life and I know that this is something I really care about and I'm really passionate about. So I'm just kind of trusting the whole journey of how things started and just sort of like following this through. And that is in so many ways of our life. I think that it's easy just to drop it or forget it or to doubt ourselves. And we need to remember that part of us, that spark, that, that thing, whatever that was inside of us that was inspired enough to start to allow that. Number five, stop complaining. This is a huge one for me. I complain and I bitch and I bitch and I bitch, but it's really not helpful. Just like how it's like never complain, never explain, like there's no reason. And if you start looking at yourself and it, these might be facts, these might be true things that happen in your life. These might be things that are so upsetting or people that have done you wrong or your parents or your family or your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whatever it is. There's so many things, there's so many stories you can tell, right? So what is the most empowering story you can tell? Is it complaining and talking about how bad it is? Or is it choosing to look at it from a new perspective? Because as long as you're telling that story, that is your story, that is your truth. And it's so easy to say, I've done this with my family, it's like, well, no one helps me or no one does this. And I'm like, is that really helpful? And is that really true? Right? So what could be an alternate story I could tell myself? Actually, I'm supported in all ways, right? Somebody's always here to support me and to help me and to guide me and to love me and to show me the way. So don't complain. It's really a waste of time and truthfully, no one wants to hear it. And if they do want to hear it, they're not people you should be hanging around with. <laughs> or choose a new topic. Maybe it'll uplift the whole thing. You can be the thermostat and then the th instead of the thermometer, you can walk in and be this light and be this shining bright and just choose the dynamic in a whole new way. Number six, give yourself a break. Oh my gosh, I do this. I'm the worst. I'm the worst with it. It's like the worst story. I'm the worst. I go into it. This is why I'm bad. This is what's so bad. And you know what? Who cares? You're entitled to your feelings. It's okay. Moving on. We're not complaining. We're making what we want welcome. We don't care, okay? We do not care. We love ourselves. We love who we are and we're proud of ourselves because that's really how shit happens. It really doesn't matter. I really think the most that matters is how you feel about yourself. And then everybody else kind of vibrates and attracts and radiates to that or not. So for example, like this is a weird way to do it, but like even just like looks wise, like some people that are so attractive aren't necessarily the one that look like a perfect chiseled model exactly, exactly how they're supposed to look. It's like they're radiating this energy that you're picking up on that you're like, ooh, I like their vibe. So that's what we want to do. We want to like our own vibe and we want to put that vibe out and just let it be, give ourselves a break. And if we did something wrong, dust our shoulders off, tell ourselves it's going to be okay and move the fuck on. And finally, number seven, which actually now that I realize it's number seven, it's kind of like the seven habits of highly effective people, but not that, but maybe seven is like a magic number. Seven spiritual laws of success. Vanessa's in a numerology, what does seven mean? Trust and openness is seven, you guys. I mean, that's not my seventh thing, but that's what seven means. All of this that I'm sharing with you guys is kind of me talking to myself and trusting that if this is coming up for me and coming through me and I'm in a position that I even feel like sharing this, that maybe somebody else feels like this too. And maybe somehow it's helpful for you. Not all of my note to self will be so kind of wide, but I think it's good to start out the new year. Kick some ass. You know what I'm saying? Number seven, seven. number seven, let it go. If it's not working, 
bye bye if it's not if this story isn't working anymore bye bye you have freedom we live in a beautiful world there is no reason not to feel good right now and so much of feeling right good right now is allowing yourself to feel good right now so anything that is contradictory to your highest and best good And like let that shit go move on with our life and be like 2016 ain't got time for that okay I'm about trust and openness just saying thank you guys so much for watching I really hope you like this note to self and if something comes to mind you guys have any questions or you have any ideas or anything you'd like to explore or anything your own New Year's resolutions and kind of what you were doing, even if it is working out. Like we wanna support you, I wanna support you, I wanna love you, I do love you. I'm so grateful for you, I'm so grateful for 2016, I'm so grateful for New Slate, so grateful for you, Dolly. Are you grateful for them too? She said she is. She sometimes gets shy on camera, but she really is. And we love you guys, and I wanna hear from you guys. And any kind of awakening, any kind of journey, tag me, tag me on Instagram at Hey Mary Elizabeth, on Twitter at Mary Elizabeth, Facebook.com slash Mary Elizabeth. I just want to keep in contact. I want to create a community of support and love and rise ourselves to our highest and best good so that we can make the world a better place. There you go. There's my intention for 2016. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.